Good morning. It's Tuesday the 13th of December and I thought last night about what can I put on the channel? What would, you know, what could I do? What daily content? And I thought, how about a little moan? Because I have about 20 minutes drive to work each morning. 20 minutes time to put my feelings down on video. I thought, look at something like that. Just things on, things on the mind. It's things I could just you know, talk to about. Maybe you can comment below, let me know your feelings. And I don't know what to call this. I thought uh, roadside rant, but it's not really a rant. Or um, warblings to the workplace. If you've got any ideas what we can call it, then feel free to post below in the comment box. So, what can we talk about today? It's been uh, four days now since England got knocked out of the World Cup by France. And there's still so much anger annoyance, uh, especially online, uh, of people saying, oh, we could have done better, Southgate should have done this, Southgate should have done that. Do you know what? It really annoys me how negative this country really is about everything. We just feel so hard done by. Oh, we should have won the World Cup, it was our turn. It's crazy, really? Come on. I tell you what, right, there's people saying that you know, Harry Kane, his you know, penalty has gone into orbit, it's circled the moon twice and now landed back in the South Pacific. Very funny, but come on, could you have done any better? The pressure of the nation on your shoulders against one of the, well, let's say, let's say the World Cup holders that they are, against your former teammate, or your teammate, Neil Loris, um, you know, France's number one goalkeeper, world's number one goalkeeper, if you think about it. Could you have done any, any better with that pressure? Hindsight's a great thing, but no, surely not. You could not have done that. <laughs> Even in your wildest, wildest of dreams at night when you're sleeping and dozing on your bed, you could not have scored there. You can see what he was doing, you know, that's fine, pressure. But to have that hatred and that anger and that, you know, no wonder mental health is so high in the country. You know, yes, these players get paid millions of pounds for playing the game, but also their career is very short. Yeah, they'll be done by what, 35, 40? They have something to live, have to live off. I know, okay, they'll be living off the luxury for the rest of their lives, maybe get a bit of TV work. But still, it's not good that we can just downgrade them. You know, and give them ridicule every time. Oh yeah, they get paid that amount of money, we can do that, we're allowed. No, we're not, no. This country, and I've said this before, I said this earlier on, this country is a nation of whingers, moaners. There's a very few, very small, okay, let's say 25% of positive people. The rest of us, and I get myself included, moan, whinge. I think it's when you get to a certain age, you whinge and you moan. You know, I think you're maybe over, you know, 40, 50 even. You get into the uh, into the old age years, when you've seen years of hurt, you, you think, oh, I'm allowed to moan, I'm old. You know, I've, I've earned the right to moan. <laughs> it's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. But you know, We'll go home, we'll reset, and hopefully, two years' time, the Euros in Germany, we'll get it. You know, final last time, winners next time. My fingers crossed, let's, be, let's stay positive. You know what, we, we, we were upset when we, you know, lost at the Euros in the finals last time at Wembley, home, you know, home game. And I was a little bit angry, I must admit, that goal went, and, and I... I was frustrated, but then I sat back and I realised, well, I actually made it to the final. That's an amazing achievement. Really amazing. You know what? This, in the World Cup, we played against France, the world champions. And yes, we all know that France had a 12th player on the pitch, yeah? That World Cup referee, who I hastily tired, is one of the ones to be chosen for the World Cup final on Sunday coming. <laughs> yeah, it, the, the odds were always against us. Always. But hey, I hope Gareth Southgate doesn't go. 
I think it's done immense things for this nation, uh, for the team. Uh, some say better than Alf Ramsey, uh, or to you know to match Alf Ramsey. And I think he's brought a group of players together that is really, really good. We'll wait and see. Only South knows what he wants to do. I do hope, and uh, serious football fans hope that he will stay on and continue what he started. And you know what? I think, I believe, I believe that he will win a trophy, a cup, the championships. We shall wait and see. Anyway, let's move on from football. Uh, it's Christmas, getting towards Christmas, we are 12 days from Christmas. My true love gave to me. Uh, 12 days from Christmas. Also, you know, I went to a bump on the road. Uh, so that means uh, me and the Morris family are starting to watch, well, me and my wife, are starting to watch NAF Christmas films. You know, the films that basically, you know, are filmed back in July and, oh, and August in the heat uh, of a heat wave. And you can see you know, certain things where the actors are sweating with. Not tears of sadness, but tears of sweat running down their face. Anyway, watched a film last night called Castle, uh, or Castle for Christmas. It's on Netflix. Check it out. It's starring Brooke Shields. Now, I don't know if you've uh, seen Brooke Shields or heard of her. She was once married to Andre Agassi, the tennis player. Uh, she first starred at the age of 14 in the film Blue Lagoon, which I must admit I have never, ever watched. Never. I don't think I've, I may have seen clips, but I don't think I've seen the film from start to finish. I don't think I want to either. Not bothered. No, it's not for me. So, uh, this was on last night. The premise of the film was um, Brooke Shields is a an author called um, Sophie Brown. Very, very, you know, a successful writer from New York. And her family had, um, well, had holidays in Scotland. And um, her, I think her father uh, lived in a castle in Scotland. So she's got the links. And something goes wrong with her writing the books. They, they kill off the, one of the characters in, in her books. Uh, the, all the fans are furious. And so she goes away to hide from a fury to Scotland to visit this castle that her dad once lived in. And while there, you can imagine it's a rom com Christmas film, you know what happens. You know, she meets the Duke or the Earl. I think it's, I think it's a Duke, Duke of Dun Dunbar. I'm not going to tell you the rest. You probably guessed the rest. But it's a good film. Well, it's it's not a good film. It's a naff Christmas film, but it filled a couple of hours on a very cold December evening. If you've watched any naff films, let us know in the comments below which one I sh you should recommend me for me to watch. It'll be <laughs> interesting to see what your take is on these Christmas films because uh, uh, they are um, specific for this time of year and they always follow the same path, the same uh, storyline. Very interesting. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so if you want to put in below uh, the, what you think this little, they buy daily maybe, uh, do it twice a week, three times a week if I think of anything to talk about. Um, feel free to comment what we should call this little feature in the comments below. Oh, can I just say, uh, and, and I'm sure the whole nation is um, behind me on this one, the, our condolences to the families who lost their children. I say drowning, but that uh, tell thing that's happened in the West Midlands, when the kids have gone through the ice on that lake and have, and have drowned. I think four, um, four deaths so far, and I think they're still searching for two bodies. Um, it is a terrible time at any time of year is terrible to, to lose a loved one to, to lose a child I never want to go through that with my son but to lose it at Christmas Christmas will always be linked with the, the death of the child and it's supposed to be a joyful time so uh, I'm sure you'll join with me in sending condolences uh, to that family and to the families of those who are the, uh, the, the youngsters have, have passed away uh, right, no time for work. Have yourself a great day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Hopefully we'll do one of these again tomorrow. And feel free to like and subscribe and comment below. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.